Hello there, friends, and welcome back to more Final Fantasy VI. Last time, we became fugitives here in Narsh after we tried to touch a really shiny rock. And we're now on the run to go to a castle named Figaro. But before we do that, there are a few things I want to touch on here in Narsh before we head out. First things first, if we try to go back into the main city... Hmm? Is that... Hey! It's not safe here. We better hightail it to South Figaro. Or hightail it to South to Figaro. Uh, the, uh, South Figaro is a completely different location. Um, yeah, we can't actually go back into the main city proper, which is pretty obvious as we are fugitives. However, there is one building that is willing to let us in. This is a school for the beginning adventurer. Despite all of our recent advances in technology, the outside world remains full of monsters we know little about. Here, we provide advice to travelers brave enough to face its many dangers. So, I threw a lot of terminology and information at you guys in the previous episode, and it definitely felt a lot of, uh, uh, pretty full after I went back and looked at it. So, as we explore this adventurer's uh, area, I want to go ahead and sort of reintroduce certain concepts. But let's go ahead and take our time and start talking to some of these guys. This is water from a recovery spring. It will, re it will restore your HP and MP. Such springs are located throughout the world, so always be on the lookout. So right here we can see that Terra's MP, for example, is uh, a bit low. So if we use this recovery spring, it is now fully back up. It'll heal HP and MP to its maximum, and you can use them infinitely. Before we go in that room, let's talk to this guy. This is a school for the beginning adventurer. Alright, so this is the guy from the front door. Uh, let's start from the rightmost room. Hello. This is a save point. At save points, you can use tents and sleeping bags, and also save the game. This is the same uh, tutorial that we got while we were in the Narsh Mines, so we can save our game here if we so desire. The button you press to talk to me is the confirm button. Press the cancel button to go back. If you press and hold cancel, you can dash. So, one thing I want to go ahead and point out is that throughout this game, I'll be making comparisons to the original release of Final Fantasy VI with its uh, future ports and whatnot. Something that you cannot do in the original release of Final Fantasy VI is sprint normally. However, in this release, we can do that uh, at will, which is really, really nice. In the settings menu, the configuration, you can also set it to your default speed to where you want to run. I won't be doing this as I prefer the walk speed naturally, but I just wanted to go ahead and point that out. Uh, hello. We got a pot right here that has an ether. Valuables are sometimes hidden in pots, such as this one. Another uh, similarity, or I guess another difference between the original release and ports, is that the, uh, if there's an item hidden in a pot like this, there will be an exclamation point telling you that there is. In the original release, there was no such thing. So you've got to be more on the lookout. Have you heard about relics? Relics can grant you a variety of abilities. For example, sprint shoes double your walking speed. A gauntlet lets you hold a weapon with both hands to increase damage. The Knight's Code makes you shield others in combat. Dragoon boots allow you to perform jump attacks. A person can equip up to two relics at the same time. Yeah, we haven't really gotten into relics just yet, so whenever we do get our hands on those, I'll go into them in more detail. Potions may taste funny, but they also heal injury. If you are hurt, drink one to restore some HP. Staying at an inn will completely heal your entire party. Yeah, that's really interesting. I wonder what, like, ethers and elixirs taste like. Be careful. Sometimes monsters lurk inside of treasure chests. I don't believe you. Monster in a box. Oh, well, you know. That's what I get for my hubris. We've got a silver lobo here. Let's go ahead and just uh, attack it with fire. Again, Terra is going to be mostly using her magic attacks as, as her main form of damage. As we can see, it does quite a bit. Now, this actually reminds me. I have something to put on lock. Unfortunately, we didn't get any items from that chest. That was just a tutorial showcasing that there could be enemies hiding in uh, a treasure chest. I stole a mithril knife from the guard leader in the previous episode, so I want to go ahead and put that on lock to give a pretty decent attack boost. It's something crazy, but it's something. 
Let me go and heal up here. Uh, hello there, sir. If you set the battle mode to wait in the config menu, you can take all the time you want to select spells or items in battle without having to worry about being attacked. I went over that earlier, but it's nice to have a bit of a refresher. Status effects are represented by different colors. Blue equals reflect. Spells are reflected back at enemies. Yellow is protect, with uh, it increasing your physical defense. Green is shell, with your magical defense being increased. Red is haste, your speed is increased. White is slow, your speed is decreased. We saw this with the slime ability with the Ymir boss fight previously. Pink is stop, time is frozen. This means that your ATB bar stops filling. We saw this uh, with the guard leader fight as well. So we've already seen a decent amount of those ailments. Damage received by characters in the back row is halved, but so is their attack power. To change rows, select formation in the menu and press confirm twice on the target character. Oh, and if you select another character from that menu, you can swap the order of the two characters. So for example, if we wanted to make Terra our uh, top row person, then there we go, we can just swap that around. Um, normally that doesn't really have any major effect other than just your preference, uh, so I'm not really going to worry about who's where, at least not yet. Um, one thing though, we can actually swap who we're walking around as with the right bumper. Uh, this is again a new feature. And uh, for right, I'm going to be trying to stick to whoever is story relevant at the time as being the person I walk around as. So for this case, we're going to be sticking around with a lock for a bit. Damage is more severe when enemies have you surrounded, especially if you've got your back to the attacker. That's very important, as we saw a pincer attack previously. The white numbers that appear during battle indicate damage. Green numbers are for recovered health. The defend command halves the damage received. It stays in effect until another command is entered. When selecting the target for a spell, press the ZL or ZR button to target one or all allies or enemies. When the gauge next to a character's name is full, you can use a command action. Select the skip option to skip that character's turn and move on to the next in line. You can flee from most battles by holding down the L and R buttons at the same time. However, there actually is a bit of a caveat to fleeing battles in this game, where characters will flee individually and not as a group, which means you need to hold down the flee button until everyone has escaped combat, or until at least one person has and the others fall. You might find this room more useful after you've gained some experience out in the world. A lot of, your, a lot of the things you'll hear in here might not make much sense until you've gotten your feet wet. That is true, so we might actually leave that room alone for now. I'll heed your advice. But this this is a nice, nice area to just kind of learn the basics of Final Fantasy VI, as this game throws a lot of things at you immediately for you to try and understand. This game isn't really hard per se, but it's definitely there's a lot of things you gotta learn pretty quickly. But now we're at the we're now in the overworld map. As you can see, this is a big world. We're here on the red arrow in Narsh, and our destination is somewhere south, so probably down in that desert area. There are a few enemies uh, on our way to Figaro that I want to encounter. None of them are particularly special, but there is something that I want to go ahead and talk about that is going to play a core part of this series. Throughout the playthrough, as we obtain new major characters, I will be talking about them and giving a brief, brief overview of how they function and how to best use them in your party. Because of how many characters there are in this game, it can be difficult to try and manage all of them and use them to their best ability. So I want to go ahead and give you guys the first of those little introduction slash bios. But even though Terra was the first party member we got, I actually want to go ahead and talk about Locke first. So, Locke is first up on our list of characters to talk about, and thankfully he's quite simple to explain. Each character in Final Fantasy VI has an array of base stats that can help guide players towards what suits each character best. There's no rules saying that you have to make your character a specific way, as it's more of a suggestion since Final Fantasy VI allows you to customize your characters pretty much as you like, with a few exceptions, of course. I do think it'd be best if I did a quick rundown on each stat for those who might be a little lost right now. First up is HP and MP. These stats are fairly self-explanatory, as they showcase how much health and mana a party member has at any given time. 
One important thing to note about these two stats, however, is that they are the only ones that will naturally rise as a character gains levels, as every other stat in the game must be raised by some other means outside of that. Next are the stats marked in red. These stats are primarily raised through Magicite. Strength and Magic directly affect the potency of physical and magical actions, respectively. And even if characters can't naturally use magic, like Locke for instance, the magic stat can still aid the character, so don't write it off immediately. Agility helps determine the speed of a character, which can help their ATB bar feel quicker in combat. Stamina raises the potency of heal over time abilities and resistances. If you're someone who doesn't know what Magicite is just yet, don't worry about it right now, but do keep that information in your back pocket. Next are any stats marked in blue. This means that relics and other gear can be used to raise these stats. Now, Locke is a man who focuses primarily on physical attacks, boasting a respectable strength stat and a pretty good selection of weapons, giving him a distinct edge over others in combat when it comes down to strictly physical damage. Locke's high speed aids in taking down foes with his hard-hitting attacks that hit quite often as well. Locke also notably has a very good evasion stat, meaning he can dodge incoming attacks quite frequently, and pair that with decent HP, and it will be difficult for enemies to kill him without a fight. Now, all of this doesn't come without some drawbacks. For one, physical damage in Final Fantasy VI can be very difficult to put to good use during certain chunks of the game due to enemies having really high physical defenses, which then you would want magic to help pick up the pace when it comes to dealing damage. And, well, Locke can't naturally use magic now, can he? In these certain cases, Locke will have a hard time keeping up with those who can use magic or magical attacks better than he can, while he just sits around with not much to use his turns on. But this brings me to my personal recommendations on what Magicite and Relics to give Locke to help him have that fighting chance. When it comes to Magicite, due to Locke being more made to dish out physical attacks more than anything, giving him any Magicite that can help boost his strength is definitely worth a mention. It also helps that most of these Magicite also allow Locke to use some very devastating magical attacks that he can fall back on, making him more of an all-rounder rather than just a one-trick pony. In terms of relics, there are a mix of early game and end game relics in here, so you won't be able to get your hands on all of these right away, but pretty much all of them are useful for the whole game. Relics like the Hyper Wrist and Gigas Gloves can help boost Locke's base damage, while something like the Master Scroll can allow Locke to hit multiple times in one action which can easily crush an enemy in one or two turns. Locke also has a few relics that are unique to him, like the Thief's Bracer or Brigand's Glove. Overall, Locke is a character with the makings of a very powerful damage dealer that is held back by a glaring weakness that haunts him for a considerable amount of time. But next we need to talk about his main gimmick outside of just hitting anything that isn't made of metal really, really hard. That takes us to his special ability, Steel. The name says it all. This ability allows Locke to steal items from an opponent in combat. The chance of success for steal is based on a few factors, like Locke's current level and the level of the enemy he's trying to steal from, plus any extra bonuses from relics like the Thief's Bracers. Every enemy in the game has the potential to hold up to two items on their person, with one item being considered a common item while the other being considered to be a rare item. If Locke successfully steals from an enemy, there is a 1 in 7 chance of the item being the rare item, with the remaining 7 in 8 chance being the common item. Only one item per enemy can be stolen at a time, meaning that you're going to be rolling the dice on whether or not you'll actually get the item you want from an enemy. There aren't too many enemies in this game that hold super valuable items, but I'll be posting the steal rewards during their boss encounters, and will make mention of any item that might be worth getting your hands on. Okay, now that we've gotten to know Locke a little bit better, we have now arrived at a Chocobo Stable. This is at the southwesternmost part of the desert. Uh, Chocobos are sort of a mount, a reoccurring mount uh, creature in the Final Fantasy franchise. And, excuse me, we've got someone here who wants to teach us how to ride a Chocobo. Press the confirm button or up with the directional buttons to move forward. Change course by pressing left or right with the directional buttons. Press the ZL button to change the view. 
You can also control it. Uh, 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 you, you can control it the same as when walking. You can dismount by tapping cancel, but be careful. The bird will return to its pen as soon as you get off. 100 gil for a chocobo ride. How about it? Why not? Go ahead and teach Terra how to ride a chocobo as she has amnesia. Might not be a bad idea. Chocobo. And we also get this awesome chocobo music as we ride across the sands. Very exciting. Not very useful, unless you were just constantly fighting battles out here in the desert and you just want to avoid encounters, even though the Pixel Remaster definitely has other features to do that, but it's really fun just to have this in general. The Chocobo Stable is also a location that I would suggest going to if you are a completionist, as it is fairly important um, for that sake. But right smack dab in the middle of the desert is the uh, destination that we have in set, which is Figaro. So let's go ahead and head straight inside. Figaro Castle. Halt! Oh, it's you. Proceed. We're here at Figaro Castle. That'll probably be the only time I ever do that, but I wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way. There's a lot to explore here, but we're not going to touch on that just yet. So we am definitely getting that itch to walk around. But we have important matters here. Hello, you look important. <laughs> you mean this young woman is? Who are you? Oh, my apologies. How rude of me to turn my back to a lady on our very first meeting. The young king of Figaro Castle, imperial ally and champion of the technological revolution. His name is Edgar. And we're going to be keeping it as Edgar. I am Edgar, the king of Figaro. Surprised that someone like me knows a king? <laughs> well, I'll catch you two later. So, you're an Imperial soldier, right? Don't worry, Figaro and the Empire are allies. Feel free to rest here for as long as you'd like. It's not in my blood to harm a lady. Why are you being so kind to me? Is it because of my abilities? I'll give you three reasons. First of all, your beauty has captivated me. Second, <laughs> I'm dying to know if I'm your type. I guess you're abilities would rank a distant third. Hmm? What's the matter? Guess my technique's getting a bit rusty. Hmm. I suppose some girls would have felt something from those words. But not me. Don't be so down in the dumps, Terra. We have a whole castle to explore. So I guess starting off here, let's go ahead and talk to you two. Feel free to wonder about the castle. I'm gonna do just that. Feel free to wonder about the castle. Well, you guys sure do have something very exciting to say, don't you? Now that Jastal has the power of Magitek at his command, he's had, he has he has sights set on world domination. Uh, sorry, bro. Sorry to hear that. I don't know. I hear that Jastalian Empire got its hands on something called magic. Hmm. Wouldn't be this, would it? Ah, uh, I don't think they need to know that. Anyway, let's go ahead and take this rightmost room here. Ooh, free loot. Uh, don't mind me. Um, hey, I'm friends with you. I, I have a friend who is a friend with your king. I'm sure you'll let this slip by. Welcome. Okay, he doesn't even know that. Okay, so we have the auto crossbow, noise blaster, and bio blaster here. So we can't really do anything with these just yet, but we already have one of these in stock. The auto crossbow, even though we haven't even got any. Uh, so... Out of these two tools, which is what these are what they are, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and buy the Bio Blaster, but I think I'm gonna hold off on the Noise Blaster just yet. I wanna go ahead and conserve as much skill as I can, as, while in the early game, money isn't really that big of an issue in this game, it can get out of hand with how many characters there are, so I want to try and keep it fairly tame. I don't think I'm going to need any of these crazy items, but let's just go ahead and go over them individually. Potion restores 50 HP. Ether, Ether restores 50 MP. 
Antidote cures poison. Gold Needle, ne Gold Needle cures petrification. Echo Screen cures silence. Phoenix Down cures the KO status. We would have needed this for Biggs, but unfortunately he's not with us anymore, so I guess he doesn't need it anymore. Sleeping Bag, we've gone over that, and Tent is fully restores the entire party's HP and MP. Um, out of all of these, I think just getting, like, maybe five more potions is probably the only thing I really need. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. Uh, okay. Actually, before we head out over here to the lower areas, let's go through these and grab this treasure chest right here. Phoenix down. There we go. Didn't even need to buy one. We have two now. And we get this nice view at the top of Figaro Castle. Obviously, all we pretty much see is just desert. But hey, I mean, hey, honestly, I think the desert has a nice charm to it. It's very unique. Um, I don't think it's like the most beautiful thing on the planet. But the desert definitely has its uh, benefits. You wouldn't know by looking at it. But this castle is loaded with advanced technology. For example, uh, whoops, <laughs> it's all top secret. I don't know, I can see turbines of some kind as uh, on these pillars. There's fans all over the place here. I mean, Final Fantasy VI is not your traditional like fantasy RPG like a lot of uh, JRPGs tend to be. This game definitely focuses a lot more on the steampunk aspect of, uh, of a fantasy genre. Figaro Castle is the most advanced structure in the world. This game definitely still has fantasy aspects to it, but it is a lot more focused on industry than anything else. Figaro has an alliance with the Empire. Ah, oh, that should be helpful. Okay, so we have a free inn right here, which we don't really need as um, we have that full restore point at Narsh, but this is also a free healing spot if you want that, that too. Not too long ago, the king tried to hit on the High Priestess. Oh, did she ever let him have it? I'm sure he's made a pass or two at you already, hasn't he? You have such a way with words, Terra. I don't blame you, though. Our king showers his attention on women. Young, old, pretty, or plain, no one is safe. Well, at least he has appreciation for people. It doesn't seem like he treats men any worse, either. You know, a king that loves his kingdom. Uh, I respect it. Though, there, of course, there are boundaries that he has to respect, and let's hope he does. Uh, we'll save you for later. Let's talk to you. His Majesty said he'd marry me when I got old, uh, got old enough. Oh dear. Oh, hello. Soldier on duty here. The Gestalian Empire has already overthrown all three of the other nations on the southern continent. It's only a matter of time before they make their way up here. Wow, okay, so there are multiple nations that now have been overthrown by one massive empire. Well, that doesn't bode well. And, I mean... We already saw the might of... We already saw a decent sneak peek at how powerful the Empire is with that Magitek armor we were riding on previously. So we can already get a pretty decent image in our head how dangerous they are They are truly at their full power. This is a library of some sorts. Scholars all over the world are busy studying magic, but you can only learn so much about something without seeing it. The ancients once wielded a force known as magic, those who mastered the art were called Magi. Hmm. Let's go downstairs. Again, try to avoid using your powers around them, Terra. Uh, let's see here. Go to this room. I gotta say, I really love this rendition of Figaro Castle. It's really nice. The advanced weapons and other items we manufacture here are shipped to South Figaro. See, I told you guys it was a different location. I wasn't going crazy earlier. Uh, but South Figaro, it seems that this kingdom is not just one giant castle. It actually does have uh, certain other locations. You know, towns to govern over, which, you know, kind of is needed in a kingdom. Let's go down south here. Now we have the first floor. Let's go to the bottom left first. Don't mind me, good sir. I'm so sorry, but I can't let you go down there. It's too dangerous. I'm gonna try again. Sir, let me go down there. The Figaro Castle engine room is down those stairs. The engines are currently undergoing maintenance, so we can be ready to move at a moment's notice if the need arises. 
Ah, uh, okay. Interesting. This castle has engines, and I wonder what for. Unfortunately, this does not continue the potential trend of elixirs hiding in clocks, but trust me, I'll be on the lookout. No hidden item in that pot, but we have some prisoners to talk to here. Warden? These good-for-nothing brigands have been locked up for thievery, and worse. You best keep a safe distance. I'm sure Terra will be fine. Hello, you're the closest. Relax, my boys are just blowing off some steam. I'm sure King Edgar will let us out of here in no time. We're just some small potatoes compared to the real threat lurking out there. King Edgar knows that. I'm Lone Wolf, the pickpocket. Ah. Doing jail time for pickpocketing. Interesting. I demand to see Edgar. How dare they keep us in this stinking pit? Okay, well. What do you got, to, uh, sir? You wanna, you wanna come talk to the visitor? Hey, there we go. Ugh, something smells terrible in here. Uh-oh, I think it's me. Uh, yeah, you know, don't get time to bathe. Uh, I think that's about everything. We have that one last NPC to talk to, but let's go ahead and say hi. I think everything else has been covered. Hello, madam. Edgar has a twin brother, you know. He was such a nice boy, always thinking of his family. Edgar, what's wrong with Dad? Why is everyone talking about a successor? Are you blind? Haven't you seen how thin his face has become? What do you mean? Edgar! Are you... crying? Edgar's twin brother, who traded the throne for his own freedom. His name is Sabin. Ah, yes, Sabin. I'm sure he's a fine young man by now. He was just a boy when he left even smaller than his brother. I often wonder where he is now and what he's doing. And the uh, big brass comes back in. So we have a nice little family here when it comes to the royal family, which, yeah, that sounds about right. But I think this is enough exploring of the castle. Let's go ahead and go back and say hi to Edgar. Perhaps he and Locke have concluded their business. Well, what do you like? How do you like my castle? King Edgar, there's someone from the Empire here to see you, sire. Kafka, no doubt. Fooey! Emperor Distal's stupid orders! Edgar, you pinhead! Why do you have to live out in the middle of the stinking desert? These recon jobs are the pits. Ahem! There's sand on my boots. Sorry, sir. All clear? Right foot clear. All gone, sir. Pathetic idiots. Sir, Sir Kefka, what bring what in the world brings you out of my way? You wouldn't be thinking of invading my kingdom next, would you? We have an alliance. An alliance with this miserable little sandpit? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I hear you've been busy down south, taking over a country or three. Just what is the Empire up to? That's none of your concern. What brings Emperor Distal's own court mage, Kefka, to my humble castle? A girl of no importance recently escaped from us. We heard she found refuge here. This wouldn't have to do with that witch everyone's been whispering about, would it? Lies! She merely stole something of minor value. Is she here? That's a tough one. Hmm. There are more girls in here than grains of sand in the desert. 
A man couldn't possibly keep track of them all. Oh, Edgar. You know you only stand to lose by trying to hide her from us. <laughs> I truly hope nothing happens to your precious Figaro. I didn't like the sound of that. Where's Terra? Take her to her room. I'd love to stay and chat, but the Chancellor and I have some planning to do. Being a king's not all tea and crumpets, now if you'll excuse me. Follow me. That Kefka, that Kefka guy seems like a real piece of work. But I'm sure Edgar's got some kind of plan to, uh, you know, deal with him. It, lock, uh, okay, I guess we're just trading places, Lock. Uh, lock? Where'd you go? Don't leave the amnesiac all alone. I'm just gonna assume he went this way. Aha! Hello there, Lock. Lost you there for a bit. Sorry, I didn't mean to drag you around like this without giving you a chance to rest. I'm... Locke, right? Edgar told me about you. Is it true that you're a thief? I'm a treasure hunter. Uh, on the surface, Edgar pretends to support the Empire. Truth is, he's collaborating with an underground resistance group called the Returners. I serve as their go-between. The old man you met in Narsh is one of us too. The Empire. But I'm an Imperial soldier. Not anymore. They were using you, that's all. Things are different now. It's just... I don't know what I should do. Whenever I try to think, it just makes my head hurt even worse. All that matters is that you make your own decisions from now on. Try not to think too hard right now. You'll know what you want to do when the time comes. But how will I know which choice is right?